So with this clan, my plan is to take cats that other people have submitted and put them into my save. So with this, it's definitely a little bit difficult because I have to go through the code, I have to figure out what the cat's code is, I gotta type it all in and then make sure I typed it in right, and there's a lot of different little steps. So I want to put a disclaimer in and say not all these cats look exactly how they were submitted. Some of them I had to take some liberties on to get as close as possible, but I promise you I I tried. <laughs> Despite some of the cats looking a little bit off, most of them look pretty much exactly how they were submitted. I even went as far as to try and get some of the personality traits to be the same, and yeah. All the cats that are chosen are randomly generated. However, later on, whenever I start adding kits, what I usually do is I look for cats that look similar enough to the parents that I can sort of, you know, accurately claim that they came from that cat. Cats that are brought in from loners or outsiders, since we don't exactly know what their both their biological parents really look like. Sometimes we'll know one of them, but a lot of the times it's kind of like another random thing. So with that, I don't really match it as much as I could. But, you know, I feel like I have less of a reason to at that point. Regardless, the form for submitting cats is still open. I just want you to know that the later you submit cats, the longer it's going to take till that cat gets in because while there is random generation, it's also like a time thing, so the sooner you submit a cat, the sooner I'm going to be able to see it. And then also if I'm looking for a specific color, instead of just randomly generating it, I'll just go through the things one by one and see if a cat matches what I want and just use that cat. Also, I want to say that I recently opened up a Discord for people who want to have their cats submitted a little bit quicker and join the clan quicker and also who want to try and keep up with the clan antic, and also submit their own art for me to show in my videos and stuff like this. Of course, you don't have to just talk about clan gen in it, it's just kind of like a little place for people to hang out and stuff, and share art, and just talk about whatever. Other than that, I hope that everybody watching enjoys this video, and I had a lot of fun recording it and being able to sort of interact with people through adding their cats on here. So the fan clan has finally begun. I have the first 10 of our cats set up perfectly fine, where we'll be able to play clan gen, but with cats that were submitted by you guys. So first off, I just kind of want to go through the settings and make sure I have everything how I want. Let's see, I think I'm going to change it where cats won't breed with cats that aren't their mate to try and control which cats breed with who a little bit more. I think I'm going to allow unknown sec second parent. But I'm going to keep these two off. And I'll leave that on because I don't think that's going to affect anything. So, let me introduce you to the clan. So, Heather Star had a little bit of trouble trying to make look exactly like their picture. However, I think I got it decently close. So, Heather Star was submitted by Ice. His mate is Night Freckle, except Night Freckle was not one of the cats that was randomly chosen. So, since Night Freckle is not joining us at the moment, his mate can only be a male or non binary cat because he is gay. Uh, Heather Star was also named Heather Wind before he was a leader, and he loves to play with snails. So here is our leader, Heather Star. This is our deputy, Mintai, submitted by Ash Does Art. The only thing requested is to not let her mate with past apprentices. This is Gelfop, medicine cat. She was submitted by Holy Ghost Cat. I was asked to not let her mate with Mentor or Apprentice. While she doesn't downright disrespect the Med Cat Code, she's very close to a lot of cats in her clan. And when a loner named Webkill joined the clan, she didn't hesitate to make it known that he would be her mate. 
and had many kids with him. So a lot of these cats have stories that don't necessarily align with this clan at the moment. So my interpretation is that all of these cats, for some reason, had to sort of leave their clan, whether that was by force, by choice, any sort of thing like that. All these cats came together, looking for refuge in some way, and managed to make a clan for themselves. Some cats are definitely more happy about being here than others, and I'm sure most of them miss their families that they had to abandon in some way. Of course, this is not canon to any of these cats for, you know, their actual owners who submitted them and stuff. But I guess that's my interpretation of how this clan was made to be. And you could consider this maybe like an alternate universe for those cats, or some sort. The next cat is the Mediator. Her name is... I'm gonna mispronounce this. Hiragara? Hiragara? Something like that? She was submitted by Okani? Okani? Something like that. <laughs> Too many words here I can't pronounce. Or Kabuki slash Azari the Poconerd. I'm perfectly fine with Kagari having a mate. Please do not pair her with apprentices or mentors with uncomfy age gaps. While Toms are fine, she cats would be preferred. Koragara was formerly a kitty pet who trained who joined a strange new clan called Uro Clan, where instead of receiving the traditional warrior names, was given a name roughly meaning Black Blast in Japanese, in honor of Pelt and Golden Eyes. Despite her lonesome personality, Koragara is an effective mediator, a rank known as a Deamo in her home clan, with a gift for stories and seeing things that aren't there. She's rather shy but always happy to interact with others, though her odd terms for clan ranks will take some getting used. So this cat definitely came from a clan that's a lot differently ran than other clans, and I think that's really interesting. Although hopefully she still gets along well with everybody here. Fairy Paw. Fairy Paw was submitted by Zephyr Wind 16. So Fairy Paw, despite being very much compassionate, is basically just a feral gremlin that the clan picked up at some point, probably while still a kid. Fairy Paw acts super sweet most of the time, but will literally turn into the craziest being at the drop of a hat, because why not? But Fairy Paw actually wants to be a mediator, and is an apprentice for that, if that's an option, mostly because the great speaker. That's it. So I will say, I, I was able to get their personality trait correctly, so compassionate matches with compassionate down here. However, the like, secondary personality traits, or, like, the skills, or whatever. I, I was having issues getting that to match up correctly, so I don't really have great speaker up here. But, just wanted to point that out. The next cat is Vulture Slash, and she was submitted by Slasher's Victim. The only note was, don't let her mate with apprentices, mentors, or toms. The next cat is Coyote Howl. He was submitted by Hollow Flight. I think he used to be a loner, but joined the clan for fun. He sees it as a new adventure, maybe doesn't quite understand why they have to follow the warrior codes so strictly. He's a very pretty cat. I like him. Owl Cry was submitted by Shiny Misty. If it is possible, please don't let Owl Cry mate with her former apprentices or mentor if she has any, please. Thank you. Ever since she was founded, ever since she helped found a Dew Clan at a young age, at the moons, Owlcry has always been interested in how clan culture came to be in the first place, asking any cat she encounters to learn more about its history. She is easily approachable and always willing to listen to a cat talk about their problems and lend a supporting paw if ever needs it. While she has a high interest in becoming a mediator, Owlcry wishes to experience life as a warrior first, seeing as she just recently got her warrior name. She enjoys spending time in the nursery to play with the kittens when she has free time, but may be a bit absent-minded when out on patrol, losing herself in her thoughts. Have fun with Owlcry. It was fun writing a quick little bit for her, 
In game, she had the prompt about playing with kits a few times when she was apprentice, which made me really happy. But she also mistakenly poisoned her mentor and before becoming a warrior. So, whoops. Owl Cry seems like a really interesting cat. I I adore when people gave me like a little bit of about their backstory and stuff. It's really interesting learning about cats that way. Hurricane Paw was submitted by Wolfie Tin. Hurricane Paw was noisy as a kid and still carries some of that into her apprenticeship. She's very energetic and likes to talk a lot. Antler Paw. She was submitted by Bonnie as my dog slash the autistic frog. Whatever the cat chooses in game is fine. It'd be awesome if the cat joined as a, the clan as an apprentice. So Antler Paw was actually submitted as a warrior, but I changed her to be an apprentice, so she's younger now and she'll have to go through apprentice stuff. So I also want to mention that the clan name that was given to me was suggested by Eevee Spirit on YouTube, and they gave me about six different ideas for names, so I actually went ahead and used the other names for the bordering clans. So all of our clans was named by Eevee Spirit, which I think is super cool that we even got somebody to help us with like the clan name itself. So let's see, let's just go ahead and put a few cats on patrol. Owl Cry makes it look easy. When the patrol is done mousing, everyone else ends up carrying. Catch is mostly brought down by them. This is such a weird sentence. I'm, I have reread it like four times now. Owl Cry makes it look easy. And then when the patrol is done mousing, everyone else. When the patrol is done mousing, everyone else ends up carrying catch is mostly brought down by them. I think them is Owl Cry. Maybe? God, I don't even know. Um, <laughs> they lead the way back to camp, soldering with a distinctly smug sway of their head. The patrol discusses rumors that they've been hearing that there's a badger denning in a certain part of Ambrosa, Ambrosa clan territory. Okay, we're gonna not proceed on that. Everyone agrees it's concerning, and the patrol is much more alert than usual when collecting moss for bedding. Yeah, I don't want us to die to badgers immediately. As Gale Fox pats through Ambrosa clan territory with their entourage, they feel a presence join them. Proceed. The scent of a familiar pelt reaches Coyote Howl's nose. They know this cat. With a friendly purr, they turn to greet their friend from beyond the grave. The rest of the patrol gives them some space. Hmm, Coyote Howl, who do you know? The only cat that we're aware of is in Star Clan is just like a random cat. I didn't want to make somebody's cat just be dead. I might change this to be like either one of my cats in a past clan or just play around with cat settings and stuff and see what I can make. Let's see, let's time skip one mood. Coyote Howl has a running nose. Jeez, we're going like, there's a lot of positive, but also a lot of negative, I feel like. Mostly positive. Antler and Barry don't seem to get along too well. And Hurricane and Gale, not really looking too good either. Okay, so we have our apprenticeships going on now. The Barry Paw is obviously the mediator apprentice. Hurricane Paw is apprenticed under Owl Cry. And Antler Paw is apprenticed under Coyote Howl. Let's go ahead and put these two together. As the patrol spreads out to hunt, Antler Paw admits that they think they had a vision from Star Clan last night. No one can make sense of the vision. Well. Alright, Hurricane and Owl, what will you find? Patrol glimpses the shadow of a fish as they pad past a stream. Hurricane Paul very carefully walks to the water's edge and waits for their chance. When the fish is near, they hook it out of the water with their claws. More fresh gill. To them, they're hunting real well then. As the medicine cat 
patrol pads out to the Ambrosa territory. Vulture Slash tells Gale Fox about the dream they had last night and what Star Clan Vision can mean for Ambrosa Clan. They have an in-depth conversation about the Vulture Slash's vision as they walk. By the time they head back to camp, they have a good idea of what to do with the information. So, I like to think that Star Clan, anytime it contacts us, is about, you know, how all these cats have been kind of lost from their own clan. Whether they ran away on purpose, they got separated by accident, something bad happened to their clan that made them have to leave, you know, whatever the means is, Star Clan brought all these cats together for a purpose, and anytime Star Clan contacts us, I like to think they're, you know, talking to us about this reasoning and kind of reminding us like there's there's a reason to this madness and things happen for a reason. So Mentai and Heather Star. Mentai spots a rabbit up ahead and seems to be acting strange. The patrol can see its tremors from a few fox links away. So we're not gonna proceed because that rabbit probably has some sort of issue going on. So let's see, are there any cats that don't really get along with each other right now? Oh, Antler Paw and Berry Paw, they dislike each other. Okay, let's go ahead and mediate. Tonic like increase, comfort increase, trust increase, romantic interest increase, dislike decrease, jealousy decrease. Good, good. So, let's see if you can get a go on your apprentice chip. Other star and owl cry don't really get along. Owl cry is eavesdropping on Heather Star. What is with Owl Cry and Heather Star? Like they disliked each other. But like they also seem to have a little bit of a crush on each other. I don't know what's going on. I mean that's not happening because Heather's gay, but like Kuragera travels to Rose Clan to resolve some personal issues. The meeting goes better than expected, and Kuragara returns to the clan to solve issues for good. Kura Kuragara wasn't looking where they were going and tripped over a small trunk, but came out of it with only their pride bruised. The coyote's howl's running nose has finally stopped running. That's awesome. A loner leaves their litter to the clan. Owlcry decides to adopt them as their own. Oh my gosh, already? Alright, Owlcry, you're already a parent to two kits, which we're going to change on the code to make them something different. So let's go ahead and save. And change those two cats to be somebody else. So, you know, in case people are curious what all goes into me freaking editing these stupid cats and Let's see, I was DM'd by Rebel the Raven. Since these cats were brought in as kittens, I'm going to keep them as kittens. Okay, we're gonna copy pelt name to accessory. Luckily, some people have been nice enough to like just DM me their cat information, and that has made things so much easier. So there's one cat that I've been seeing a lot of in my Discord server, and I want to add CrowJ in. So CrowJ's a lot simpler than a lot of the other cats. So she should not take long to code in. Do female, female. Your trait is ambitious. And when you change the traits, you have to. No, come on. You have to erase that part, or else it just won't change. So your pup is single color. I wonder if that's going to be. Let me double check and make sure that's what it's still called, because that is the 
older version of Plan Gen, so a lot of things change. Okay, I think it's just single. So I see art of this character. Little crow feathers all the time. I don't know if I can add feathers? I can to the tail. I'll just leave it as is, because I, I don't want to mess with anything and have it wrong. And then Spider is not a member, so. Alright, let's double check that these are correct. Continue, and... Okay, Raven Kit's correct. Crow Kit is not. And this is the fun where we just sit here and go back and forth until eventually I get it right. Alright, so we finally have those two kittens edited in. It didn't take me too long. I just had to trouble... Oh, my dude's froze. <laughs> there we go. I had to troubleshoot a little bit because the pelt pattern for Crow Kit is apparently called single color instead of single or plain or one or any of the other words I tried using. <laughs> so our first kit is Raven Kit. It was submitted to us by Rebel the Raven. And so for the kittens of this plan, I want to say, at least I feel like that they are a reincarnation of the castle they were submitted from. So her past life was, Raven Moon is very wise and polite. Seems to have a good connection with Stark Sun as well. Not much else, I'm fine with any way she could potentially be great. And Crow Kit was committed by a mechanical hounds. Please try to avoid her being mated with anybody that is significantly older than I'm talking about 40 moons age gap. I prefer to her be mated with she cats because I like to picture her as that big man. But because she's pan, if you think she has better chemistry with a Tom or non-binary cat, that's fine too. Polyams are just fine with her, and I think would be really cute. I love Proje a lot. I'm an older version of Clan Jin, and I really hope that you can still put her in because she's so simple to recreate. In the Clan Jin that I ran, she was, well, an evil med cat. However, you don't have to portray her as evil. In fact, I think it'd be really funny if she was actually a really good med cat. Just grumpy because everybody keeps dying around her. In my drawings of her, I've always depicted her as a blue eyed outline of. So she has a pink nose and sort of a pink gradient around her eyes and nose and mouth. Though not seen in the screenshot I gave you, at some point she did eventually get crow feathers on her shoulders. Also, here's a drawing of her that I did because I love her. Alright, there we go. Dry herbs on you. And your skin's pink. Okay. Go. And I want to refavorite you guys. Thanks, I believe that. Okay, perfect. Also, I want to mention, I really enjoy how Raven Kit and Crow Kit look nothing alike. Whenever I have cats that are both in the clan that meet together, I'm going to be a little bit more, like, doozy on how the kits will look, because I want them to actually look like they came from the parents. But since this is, has, these guys have some mystery parent, plus whoever Spider is, I like to imagine that, um, Raven Kit and Crow Kit, which I like how they're both animal na or bird names, basically. I like to think of them as, like, yin and yang, because that's what they remind me of. I just enjoy the... how different they both look from each other. Alright, Owl Cry and Hurricane Claw. The troll comes across a small dog right on the border of Ambrosia Clan territory. These cats are always getting themselves in danger, I swear. Every five seconds, it's just danger, danger, danger. Yeah, um, we're not proceeding. So, Heather Star and Vulture Splash. Your patrol comes across a squirrel. It's engrossed in nibbling at a morsel beneath a tree. Vulture Splash rapidly pads towards the squirrel, their tail tip twitching in excitement. The squirrel is alerted to their presence with a bird call, bird alarms call, but Vulture Splash launches forward and cuts off the escape with a bite to the back of the neck. Dang, Vulture Slash. 
really went at it. Alright, coyote and antler. On patrol, antler paw notice. The suspicious paw prints in the mud bunny can't be. Turns out they were antler paw's own paw prints. Antler paw helps with embarrassment. They can't meet the eyes of the rest of the patrol. They don't want to look dumb in front of Sailor Cat. Good job. Tail Fox is concerned. The warrior escort is usually quiet. When talking on their troubles, then I comment that they're that they could not help but think of what legacy they would leave for Star Clan called it. Tail Fox and Mentai spend their time on the patrol discussing how Star Clan at the end of their life did not mean it was the true end. Even in Star Clan, Cows had their own role to play. Mentai's legacy would shine brighter than any star. Comforted by these words, Mentai thanks Scale Fox and helps bring back the Earth. The Antler Paws complaining that her came from never does anything at all. Antler... The apprentices are just never getting along with each other, ever. Hurricane Paul tried to bring Vulture Flush's creator up to them, but it turned into a fight for somebody else to break up. Very Poswap's favorite prey was Gale Paw. Aww. Very Paw stayed up all night in your ways to impress Coyote Howl. That's adorable. Here, I'm gonna look up how to say this real quick. So I want to pronounce it at least mostly correct. Okay, I don't know if that's a... I can't find the like pronunciation of this word. I'm finding it with eyes, but not the A's. Kurogiri. So I assume it's just Kurogira. Probably something like that. So Kirigara wants to spend more time with Hurricane Paul. Kirigara admir admires how brave Hurricane Paul is. Ah dang. I'm gonna just adopt Hurricane Paul at this point. All right under it. Gale Fox is complaining that Hurricane Paul never does anything helpful. Mentai and Bolster slash heckled another clan at the gathering together. Coyote Howl appreciates Kirigara. Telling them that they had a feather stuck to their face. And Vulture Slash wants to spend more time with Coyote Howl. Owl Cry feels safe when Heather Star is around. Man, these two are like besties. Heather Star is checking on Berry Paul. Heather Star asks Crow Kit how they're doing. Proving Kit tells a joke that only Crow Kit can understand. Crooked, which is they could get their pelt to shine like antler paws. So just a few cute little things. Very excited for when the pets become warriors as well. The patrol wants to hold a training session for Hurricane Paw. They decide to focus on tree climbing. Hurricane Paw picks up the instruction quickly and follows the directions of the other patrol members as they climb the tree. Look at you go, Hurricane. The Antler and Coyote. While on patrol, Antler notices the suspicious, suspicious paw prints in the mud when we the canopy. Let me guess, it's gonna be your own paw prints? No. Paw prints lead to a trespassing rogue. Patrol quickly hides themselves between a bush and sets up an ambush that sends a rogue fleeing off Ambrosa territory. Dang. Fighting off rogues now. You know, we're supposed to be getting more people to join our clan, you know? We're supposed to be expanding the clan and stuff, not not trying to kill everybody who gets close to us. As the patrol spreads out, Vulture Slush admits that they think they had a vision from Star Clan last week. Okay. The patrol thinks. The patrol talks to them about whether it was a real vision in this game. What's a Star Clan vision? They're definitely like. Darklands trying to tell us something. Alright, well, proceed. They have an in-depth conversation about Mentai's vision as they walk. By the time they head back to camp, they have a good idea of what they do with the information. I swear, Darkland will not leave us alone. I don't know what's going on. 
Also, I messed with the Star Clan cat a little bit. <laughs> I changed it to Feather, because I thought it'd be fun to have the cat sort of be named after the first clan that I made on this channel, which was Feather Clan. So I thought it'd be fun to make my cat sort of represent that. And also, I have the owl face just because my, you know, little character over in the corner is based off of an owl, so I feel like it fit. Loosely based off a of barn owl, you know. But, I think that's all the patrols we have. I don't know what Star Clan is trying to tell us. They talk to us every five seconds, though. I swear I've gotten a billion freaking Star Clan prompts. And we're only on Moon 3. But, like, what horrible thing is about to happen to this clan? Do I need to be prepared? Berry Fire is welcome as a fully trained mediator of the clan. Look at that. Look at Berry Fire. I love that their suffix is fire just because of the freaking pointed ear. I know some of our cats will have pre chosen suffixes based on, like, because of how they were spitted and stuff. But I think most of the current, like, current, um, apprentices, I'm pretty sure. They were just given random suffixes. I can't remember if it was Hurricane Paw or Antler Paw that had a suffix already chosen for them whenever they were given to the clan, but, um, pretty sure Barry just happened to be called Barry Fire and matched their, like, little ear tip. That's cute. So, anything else other than some relationships? Antler Paw is sharpening their claws near Raven Kit. So, I was talking about how Hiragara should just, like, adopt Hurricane Paw. I'm like, look at this platonic leg, like, good lord. So, Hurricane Paw definitely doesn't dislike Hiragara, but Hiragara definitely likes them more. So I want to take a look at Mintai because I feel like they've been having a lot of the Star Clan stuff. Doesn't have anything backstory wise in her little blurb. I was kind of hoping it would say something about Star Clan because it could be fun to interpret something. But that's alright. Oh, I keep forgetting that the mediators exist. I want to actually use those more of clans that have cats that don't hate each other so we don't have murder happening. Oh. Ultra Slash and Ravenkit, why do you hate each other? Why does Vulture have beef with a kitten? We're taking off Romantic. Didn't really seem like it changed the dislike at all, I don't think. So let's find another pair. Did Ravenkit and Crowkit are bonded. They are a bonded pair. They are never being separated. I've never seen two cats that just joined the clan have such high green for each other. Do any other cats dislike each other? Oh. Antler Paw and Hurricane Paw. So Antler Paul dislike Hurricane Paul. Okay. So trust increased, respect increased, dislike decreased. Awesome. So Antler and Coyote, go ahead and pair you together. Patrol notices commotion and finds two squirrels chasing each other across the forest floor. Antler Paul tries to climb up, but they slip, fall, twisting their paw. Aw, Antler Paw. Antler Paw got hurt. So, Vulture and Gale. Medicine Cats Patrol pads out to Ambrose's territory. Vulture's Lush tells Gale Fox about the dream they had last night, and what the Star Clan vision could mean for Ambrosa Clan. Gale Fox shakes their heads sadly, they can't make sense of the vision. Listen, I'm just saying, it seems like. Mintai is the one who has the successful Dark Land visions, 
And I think Vulture Splash has gotten a little bit jealous, and they're trying to, like, come in and steal their thunder. And it's just like, see, I can have Star Clan things, too. Listen, I'm just taking this as Mentai's the true Star Clan prophecy hat. Oh, but I meant to add them to the patrol too, that's fine. Uh, as a patrol sends out to hunt, Owl Cry admits that they think they had a vision from Star Clan last night. <laughs> Why? They're so obsessed with Star Clan. The patrol talks to them about whether it was a real vision as they hunt. Star Clan, please, why are you so obsessed with me? I I want to know what's wrong. Uh, while on patrol, Hurricane Paul notices suspicious paw prints. The paw prints lead to a trespassing rogue. They hide in a bush and set up an ambush. Okay, we had that prompt already once. Let's go ahead and. Actually, I want to look at people's relations first. Let's see your relationships. So... Heather Star is kind of romantically liking Owlcry, although, Heather, you're gay, so that's not gonna happen. Sorry, bestie. Um... You don't have any super high relationships with anybody, but your platonic like with Mintai is pretty good. Mint and Gale have a pretty decent romantic and platonic like. Which makes sense seeing Gale is like the medicine cat. Dude, Mintai's just like, you know what? Will you take me so seriously with all my Dark Land dreams? You know, I think I love you. Like, th that's what I'm seeing here. Let's see, Gale. You're like best friends with Mentai though. God dang. Kuragera. Was Hunnic like with Hurricane so really high? They also really like Mentai. Berry Fire has a crush on Coyote Howl. Small one, very small one, but. For platonic, like, for Coyote Howl is also really decent. So is for Owl Cry. We're pretty even, honestly. Ultra Slash is pretty platonically good with a lot of people. It could be better with Hurricane Paw and Gale Fox, but, like, everybody's pretty decent. Just overall, I think Vulture Slash kind of likes everybody except for Raven Kit. <sighs> really? Coyote Howl, I don't see any romantic stuff. You have pretty you have a decent amount of like platonic likes though. That's good. Seems like you're getting along with most people, or you're just kind of like not really caring much for a lot of people. Alcry has a, a decent amount of friendships as well. Most of these cats you're friendly with. You don't really care for Gale Fox or Vulture Slash, though. Antler Paw. You're really high up platonic like with uh, Gale and Kiragara. Raven and Crow. Uh, they're related. And I, I still, even with like related cats, I have never seen cats with such like high things and all their things. Alright, so we've pretty much looked at everybody's stuff, so let's go ahead and time skip one moon. Oh, Heather Star calls the clan to a meeting and declares Hurricane Paw to be a warrior. They are now called Hurricane Leaf. Fairy Fire travels to Wisteria Clan, who receives some recent hunting disputes. The meeting goes better than expected, and Fairy Fire returns with a plan to solve the issue for good. Kiragar announced they're expecting kits, they don't believe they can effectively perform their duties while expecting kits and decides to move to the nursery. Kiragar, who on earth are you having kits with? Interesting, okay. I have no idea. Your patrol catches the scent of a fox, but is it red or gray? Tracking it, they find their red enemy 
beating on a deer fawn carcass. It's impossible to say whether the fox killed it or found it. We are not going to proceed because I do not want to die. So, Mint and Vulture? Troll hears Dustin howling and wonders whether to investigate the noise. So, for this one, I was curious, and I actually let the person who submit Mint I choose whether we should proceed or not in this patrol. And they voted, do not proceed. So the patrol decides not to investigate the source of the noise, whatever is making it will not be friendly to them. And we'll go ahead and put the last three together, because I don't want anybody to go alone. Gelfoss is on a mission to find Lungwort now that the Greenleaf is here. As the only reliable cure for Yellowcoff, they're determined that Ambrose the clan won't run out of it. They take along a warrior escort to help. Not only is the Lungwort intact and growing nicely, but there's also a nice patch of plantain growing just nearby. Glade Fox loads up their mostly oblong escort and carries the extensive harvest home, tail wagging joyfully with their good news. Very cute. So you can't work this moon. But you can. So let's go ahead. Oh, Owl and Vulture are friends. Well, Owl likes Vulture a lot more, but... Let's see. Looking for any dislike. Alright, let's go ahead and time skip one moon. Antler Pulse's brain is feeling much better. Ambrosa Clan welcomes Antler Speckle as a new warrior. Hurricane Leaf's tail was badly injured by a fox, oh no. Very Fire, tri Very fire travels to Sinis' clan. Resolves some recent personal dispute. Meeting goes better than expected, and Barry Fire returns with the clan. All the issue for good. Here, Gara thinks you'll have a small litter. And Gale Fox calls out to some eager kits, and after they have situated themselves in front of Gale Fox, they start telling the kits a thrilling stories of long ago. Gale Fox needs to decide if they hate the kittens or not, because they do not like Crow at all. But they're apparently telling Kits a story of long time past. But they also don't like one of the only two kittens that's there. So Ravenbaugh has been pestering everybody for moons on when they'll get to finally be an apprentice. And everybody is relieved that they're finally free of the young cats nagging until they ask about when they're going to be a warrior. Crowpaw has reached the age of six moons and has been made an apprentice with Vulture Star as their mentor. So. Oh, Antler Speckles, you're. Mentor. Nice. Okay. Aw, Kiragara decorates Mentai's nest with flowers to surprise them. That's really cute. I love seeing the little, like, relationship blurbs and stuff for the cats. The only problem is there's so many I usually don't actually read them. Alright, so let's go ahead and... Oh, we had some updates. Crowpaw is a little different and Ravenpaw is a little bit bigger. Antler Speckles are very pretty. So let's see, Vulture Slash and Crowpaw. Put them together. Vulture Slash instructs Cold Paw to scent the air and nods in approval when Crowpaw says they smell squirrel. Leaf Ball makes hunting a little trickier and Vulture Slash gently prompts Crowpaw to see if they remember how to navigate the leaf litter. Is leaf litter what they call like falls and leaves? I never knew that. So they're a little sloppy and the squirrel quickly spots them, Crowpaw manages to secure the catch in the end. Vulture Slash looks pleased and gives them tips to improve their technique class next time. Other stars suggest it might be a good chance to practice new fighting technique with Mintai. Mintai takes Heather Star down with a fantastic pout. Heather Star hits the ground with audible gas, shock, and impressed. Dang, Mintai. Dude, I swear Mintai is just like becoming the main character because they're getting all the star cat the star cat the star clan prophecies they're like achieving the love of the medicine cat they're the deputy she's like getting along with the kids she's stronger than the leader like what the heck Patrol finds a small burrow in the ground with a strange scent. They hesitate, unsure if it's worth checking. Hmm. 
let's not proceed. Just in case this is a fox burrow instead of like a rabbit burrow. Patrol to that to avoid the burrow, there's no telling what could wait inside. We kinda don't want any cats getting their face bit off yet. One of the worst storms of the season, and left Gale Fox in an unavoidably grumpy mood. Herbs thrown about, prey and hiding, it would take forever to find anything. Coyote Howl attempts to find a way to steer for the healer. Coyote Howl splashes water from the puddle at Gale Fox. Gale Fox turns around and hisses at Coyote Howl that they don't have time for pit games. Do continue their patrol, but Gale Fox's sour mood distracts them from any usable herbs they can find. Aww. Coyote Howl was just trying to help. Well, that's bad. Ravenclaw and Vulture Splash still don't get along. Try and fix that a little bit. There we go. Whenever somebody asks whether Kiragara will be alright raising their litter of two kits alone, they just smile and reply that everything is going to work out fine. Vulture Splash announced they are expecting kits, they choose to continue their duties as usual for now. So, two kits. We have Fallow Kit and Blue Kit, who are both about to be made into somebody else. So, Kiragara is a single parent, and they have no other parent. So, uh, Fowl Kit and Blue Kit, I will now be making them into two other cats. 